Yo, what's good, YouTube? In today's video, we're going over the top five meta assault rifle loadouts you guys need to be using. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, subscribe, notifications turned on, and let's get into it. All right, so for our first gun here today, we're going to be getting into the BP-50. This is going to be the long-range version, not the conversion kit. I got some other videos on the channel if you guys want to go check that out to see that, but this is going to be focused on the long-range version of this gun. So, First thing in here is going to be the muzzle. We're going to go throw on the VT7 Spirit Fire Suppressor. This is really good. You guys don't need to run a compensator of some sort. You should always just run the VT7, and you pretty much can call it a day at that. No reason to run anything else. It's really good overall, undetectable by the radar, and helps your recoil control, blue velocity, and damage range. Giving you a 5, 5, and 6% increase, or 8% increase, my bad, along with a 7 for your horizontal and vertical, making this thing an absolute laser beam. Now in the barrel section, we're going to go throw on the Lore Dash 9 Heavy Barrel. Giving you increase in bullet velocity and range, gun kit control, recoil control, and firing aiming stability. Uh, when I tell you guys this, this build basically doesn't move. It's pretty much one of the easiest ones you guys can possibly use in Warzone. I'm being serious. Like, it's actually really good, and I enjoy running it myself personally when I'm trying to get some gameplay with an SMG. This is kind of like one of my go-to assault rifles that I'll put on, and just because I really enjoy running it here, especially on Rebirth Island. Um, now we're going to go down to Underbrow section, throw on the Bruin Heavy support grip. This is one of those underbarrels that you're probably going to see a lot because it works so good on a variety of different guns on so many different things from assault rifles to LMGs to sometimes people throw it on SMGs. Not big fan of that. I don't really ever do that. I like my SMGs to be more mobile, but you can definitely do that, especially if you're creating a sniper support for one of those guns. But this is what we got right here. Now, magazine, we're going to go throw on the 45 round mag. That's pretty much one of the only downsides to this gun right here is the fact that there is only a 45, not a 50 or a 60. I feel like this gun probably take the absolute meta number one spot just if it had a 60 round mag just because the damage per magazine would be so much higher but overall 45 is still more than adequate and we had like the cast off 762 back in the day which only had pretty much a 40 round mag and we still ran that as our primary ar so we're still doing that with this only we have five extra rounds lastly we're gonna go to the stock section and throw on the moat 40 stock helps once again with our gun kit control ads speed and walking speed and of course, recoil control. So all really great things here. If you don't want to run this and you want to have, let's say difference, uh, you know, a different option and you don't want to have to run like the iron sights, you could take off the Moat 40 stock, go in the optic section and throw in something like the Jack Glassless. And that'll be a perfectly good build here to run it like that. But basically just switch between the Moat 40, the Jack Glassless, and pretty much you're gonna be good to go. Next up, we're getting into the SVA 545. This is one of those guns that you should be running, not in fully automatic, but basically in the burst mode or the single shot mode because it fires two shots at once. So as long as you're able to spam that trigger a little bit, this is gonna be a super fast TTK gun. You guys are literally gonna delete people with. It's awesome. I really enjoy it myself personally, or my other go-tos apart from that BP-50. I like using good guns, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so first thing in the muzzle, we're actually going to not go for that VT7. We're actually going to go down here and use the Sonic Suppressor for that, to keep us obviously off the radar. It helps see your blue velocity in range, but it doesn't help your recoil control. And the thing is with this, when you run it in the burst mode, you really have virtually zero recoil because it shoots the first two shots and then it recenters. So you have no recoil, so you don't have to worry about something that's going to help your recoil or even worsen it a little bit like it will in this case here by 4%. We just want the extra damage range and bullet velocity so you can really take people off at a distance. This is one of the most effective guns for a distance shot pretty much in the game. So you guys definitely should be running this. Um, barrel section, thrown on STV Precision, helps make you more effective at long range. There's no reason to run any of these other ones in here. I frankly don't know why they're even in the game. They're just like all horrible. Either should run this with no barrel if you're going to go that route or pretty much with this and that's it. So only run this. Now we're skipping the underbarrel section, going straight to the ammunition. We're going to throw in the 5.45 high grain rounds. And what this does is this truly maxes out our overall range, that 43.1 meters, aka that is the closest, uh, dam that's our damage profile that has the fastest TTK, is up to 43.1 meters. So you can down people unbelievably quick, and your minimum is at 70 meters. So you we've really extended this out as far as we possibly can. And your bullet velocity is well over a thousand meters per second, meaning this is going to feel a lot more hit scan than is something that has about eight to 900 meters per second. 1100 feels really, really good. And that's sometimes what you're getting with snipers in this game is about that 11 to 1300. So having a fully automatic weapon with this or, you know, a burst weapon with this is really, really good. Now to the magazine section, we're going to throw on the 60 round mag. Even though you're going to be bursting this, I would still say to run the 60 round mag. If you feel like you can get away with it, go for the 45 and you'll get a tad bit more mobility out of your build. 
but overall 60 is going to be the way to go and it's pretty much what i always run now lastly optic section we're throwing down the jack glassless though if you want a bit more range out of it go for something like the choreo eagle eye 2.5x and you'll be good right there but for me, because I'm playing Rebirth Island, I feel like I only need that Jack Glassless. And even when I was playing like Vondel and stuff like that, um, I only still ran like a red dot site to a Jack Glassless or maybe a 2.5x if I felt really inclined to do so. But even then, I was like, man, I'm not really taking people out that far just because the amount of cover there is. I felt like that red dot distance was it, the most I really needed to be able to down people. So definitely go for the Jack Glassless. This is my full build right here, though, for the SVA. You guys need to use this. Next up, we're going to give you guys a really nice mobile but fully automatic gun. That's the MTZ556. A lot of people really enjoy this one. And there's a couple of variations in which you can run it, so I'll show you guys that. But let's get into it. First thing, muzzle. We're going to go throw on the VT7. Um, you guys could go down there and run like a Casas break if you want even less recoil. Um, I definitely have done that when I ran the Iron Sight build. I thought that was an absolute laser beam. Like it actually was kind of ridiculous how there was no visual or really any recoil. It just was like a straight laser. I, was, I wasn't even having to touch the analog stick almost, especially when aim assist kicks in. So it was kind of nutty. I really liked it. So VT7 for this one or the Casas break up to you. Um, barrel, we're going to go throw on the MTZ Clinch Pro Barrel, give you that increase in your bullet velocity and damage range. Aim battle sway and firing aiming stability. It also doesn't mess your recoil at all. Like I know some of these other ones down here can do that. Um, you could definitely try it and run the drifter heavy long barrel. But overall, I mean, you pretty much only get a two meter per second increase right there. It's 28, 28, 15 percent as opposed to 21, 21 and 25. So we really just want actually the better bullet velocity. And we'll take that two meters um, difference because it's even farther out than it really needs to be. So this is definitely the best barrel to run on there, even though this is the longest barrel technically. Just go for this one. Under barrel section, Rune Heavy support grip. Pretty standard, try and true. Ain't got to explain it. You guys know the drill on this. Uh, we run it so often. So that's what we got on that. Of course, we're going to go down to the magazine section and throw on the 50 round drum. No reason, absolutely no reason for you to ever run a basic 30 rounds and even less of a reason for you to ever touch this horrible attachment, the 20 round mag. Go for the 50 and keep it at that. And here's where we can differentiate up this build. Um, if you want an optic, throw on the Jack Glassless. If you want to run the beautiful Iron Sights, which is something I really enjoy doing, especially when I'm playing Rebirth Island, because well, that's what I normally play. Um, you can go for the Jack Glassless and that'll be a great option. It'll help with your overall visual recoil. It's still gonna be a pretty big laser beam. Though, what I enjoy doing is going to the stock section and throwing on the MTZ Marauder stock, which once again helps my overall recoil control. And this thing feels so unbelievably stable. I really enjoy it. The iron sights are perfect. Maybe not with this camo, they're not as clear, but overall you can definitely still rock it and be totally fine. So the MTZ Marauder or the Jack Glassless, up to you, but this is my preferential way to run this build. All right, now we're gonna get in here to the MCW and we're not gonna be building this out as a primary long range, but more as a sniper support. This actually has statistically after the most recent update where they nerfed that DG58 LSW conversion kit, the fastest TTK in the game at 600 milliseconds, even faster than the Striker 9. So you can use this very effectively at close range, but I'll show you guys a sniper support build just for the sake of making it an actual assault rifle, not making it an SMG. So first thing is though, the Jack Raven kit. This is what makes this thing so good. You have to run this if you want that fast TTK. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You have to run this kit. Now we're gonna go straight up in here. We're gonna go throw on the magazine, which is gonna be the 40 round mag. Definitely go for that 40. No reason you'd ever wanna go for anything else or leave it stock. Always go for that. Now, underbrow section, we're gonna go in here. We're gonna throw on the DR6 hand stop. This is really gonna help you out with your overall ADS speed, aim walking speed, sprint to fire, and movement speed, keeping you very agile because you're either gonna be running this as a secondary or as a sniper sport. And those are basically the only two ways you should realistically run this. Not a primary assault rifle, run this as your secondary, your sniper support, so you can be effective at close range and medium range, and you're still gonna be very effective at both with this. Muscle, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down in here, throw on a compensator, and that is going to be the Zemin 35 compensated flash hider, which does keep us uh, off the radar a little bit. Insurance your overall radar ping from about, was it three seconds down to one, one and a half seconds. So it does a pretty good chunk right there, and, but we don't really care too much about that. Um, but what we really care about is the vertical and horizontal recoil and your firing aiming stability, making this thing super easy to be able to use. I really enjoy it. I run the Zemin 35 compensated flash hider on so many of my different guns, just because it's a very effective compensator attachment, much like the, uh, the Casas break is, but we don't have to run that on this gun. It just doesn't fit for it. So we got this. 
Lastly, we're gonna go into the optics section and you can use essentially your optic of choice. So for me, it'd probably be something like a slate reflector, not necessarily the Jack Glassless on this gun, or what a lot of people enjoy running, myself included, is the NIDAR Model 2023. It's just a beautiful, nice circular irons, uh, red dot sight that is just very clear. I enjoy it. it, doesn't take up too much of the screen. I think it is the perfect red dot sight to run on this gun. Now you can run the MK3 Reflector, your Quarters Classic Reflex, literally whatever red dot sight you feel comfortable with is gonna function properly for this gun. So you guys are gonna be absolutely beaming people, deleting, demolishing. It's gonna be sick, so try this one out here absolute banger sniper sport close range and now lastly we're not going to forget about the holger 556 i debated adding in the stb 556 from modern warfare 2 as that's got a pretty great ttk but the holger is still technically more effective than it so we're going to give you guys a build here for the holger so first thing muzzle we're going to go throw on that vt7 uh you guys have the option to go run that casas break that's another really great one but i feel like i need more of that effective damage range so we're trying to boost this out a little bit. So we have that 38.7 meters right now. And of course, our minimum is pretty decent. Our bullet velocity is only 741, but we will increase that to make it feel much more of, you know, of a better long range option. Uh, barrel section, what we're going to do is we're going to go throw on the Cryos 6 match barrel, increasing our overall bullet velocity and range, recoil control, and gun kit control. What this does is gives us that 20% increase and so we're effective out to that 46.4 meters, which means that we're going to be down to people with that first damage profile very, very fast. It increased our bullet velocity out to 819 meters per second. I wish it was a little bit faster. It'd make the gun feel a little bit better. I, I wish it was about 900 to closer to like mid 900s. That'd be preferential, but overall, this is still perfectly fine. Now we're going to the optic section. Throw on that Jack Glassless. This is going to be my optic of choice on this. I don't ever really recommend to run that Corio Eagle Eye. I don't believe this gun is as effective as it should be at super long range to the point where you're going to want to use that, though you can still try it out for yourself. I just wouldn't personally recommend it. Uh, now, magazine section, got to go through on the 40 round mag. This is pretty much a given. Like, you have to run a magazine on this. I mean, I wish this had 45, 50. I wish they had like at least a 50 round mag. Like, add that into the game. That'd be great. So, but we have that 40, so we're going to make do with that. And lastly, we're going to go to the stock. Instead of using an underbarrel, because it's actually more effective to run a stock instead of the underbarrel, I'm going to throw on this very first one right here, the RB Adel Assault Stock. Helps us out tremendously with our overall recoil control at 9, 14, and 14%, while only slowing down our ADS about 3%. So it's not that big of a deal. It works out great, stabilizes the gun out enough to be effective as your long range assault rifle. So that's my full build right there. Hope you guys enjoyed this top five. You guys did. Give it a like, subscribe, notifications turned on. Check out this other video on screen. And I'll see you all next time.